So this is a short video to discuss gender walks, or specifically the differences between the way that men and women walk, and how you can get uh, character and personality into a walk, uh, and not just how, how, how men and women walk, but also how men walk if they walk like women, and how women walk if they walk like men. As with, uh, with any kind of walk, it's amazing what you can tell about someone just by looking at the way they move, the way they walk. So I, here's a really, really fantastically useful website. Um, if you want to Google it, you just go Biomotion Lab Walker. Uh, and this is by, I believe, the University of California, um, in which they um, set up a, a really incredibly useful um, little motion capture project, which allows you to slide between genders on a person walking. And you can slide from male to female. Uh, and in fact, there are all kinds of differences you can get into it. But uh, male to female is the main one. So uh, let's just click on this link and see what we get. So, um, so we're slightly restricted by the size of the screen here, but I'll let you explore this in more detail yourself. But here's our, um, here's our walker. This is at the uh, Bio Biomotion Lab. And we can move the slider to the left to get a very male walk. Here you can see the whole walk there. Or we can move the slider to the right to get a very female walk. Here we are uh, looking at the whole thing. So you can see that the major difference is with the female walk there's a lot more motion in the hips and with the uh, male walk there's an awful lot more motion in the shoulders. The man tends to have his elbows out in a kind of, uh, you know, taking up a lot of space. The woman tends to have her elbows in. There's also a lot more up and down in the male walk than there is in the female walk. The female walk is more of a glide. Now, of course, um, and also uh, the feet on the women on the, on the woman are much closer together. The, the male walk tends to have the feet wider apart again, taking up more space. So um, it's a it's a really great resource. I highly recommend you you uh, take a close look at it. And and by um, this is actually an older version of the same thing uh, when there was just a, a, the the gender uh, slider. And now you can you can allow for for some other characteristics as well. So you can you can blend in uh, how heavy the walk is, uh, how relaxed the person is, how happy or sad they are. So it can actually help you to get other characteristics as well. But these are the key differences. Shoulders, hips, how wide the feet are apart, and how much up and down motion there is as well. So here's a, a caricature of a masculine walk. This is taken from the animator survival kit. Um, and this is a kind of strutting character. And you can see here, feet wide apart. He's taking big wide steps. His arms are swinging wide. Uh, his shoulders are swaying a lot. But there's very little hip motion. The more you add hip motion, uh, the more it starts to become like uh, like a feminine walk. Uh, and here's a, this is a still taken from the video demonstration of the animator's survival kit showing the same uh, principle. Um, and here's the same thing uh, on a woman. Again, you've got, uh, you've got more motion in the hips, very little motion in the shoulders. Shoulders tend to be steady, very little up and down motion, it tends to be more of a glide. Think of a catwalk model gliding. Feet also very close together and taking small, delicate, petite steps. Obviously, all of this stuff is caricature, uh, but that's or, uh, and even stereotyping, frankly. But um, that's what animation is, is, is about. It's really about caricature. We're trying to caricature reality. So here, here are two extreme positions in the walk. You can see the hips swaying from one side to another swaying from one side and back to the other, and that's where the main motion is. Um, and actually, if you watch the, um, uh, the video game Grand Theft Auto, you'll see that the, the way the women walk uh, is a sort of heightened caricature of a female walk, and there's a lot of extreme motion in the hips from side to side. But it's funny, you know, it works. It's, um, uh, it, it, has the, it has an effect. So, main differences between men and women, length of stride, uh, feet apart, feet wide apart here, close together there, shoulders on the man, hips on the woman, uh, maybe the body leaning on the man, maybe leaning forward, maybe the woman leaning backwards, um, and uh, feet, you could have the feet pointing outwards on the man and possibly pointing slightly inwards, uh, turning inwards on the woman, uh, lots of up and down on the man, very little up and down 
on the woman. So those would be the main characteristics. And you can reverse these roles. Here's a, uh, again, taken from the animator's survival kit. This is a, a sort of a caricature of a woman walking like a man. Um, and here, equally, uh, a man walking like a woman. And so you can see that just by changing the way that these two characters walk, we can immediately uh, completely reinvent their characters. They become a completely different person if we, uh, uh, if we change these um, characteristics and make them uh, uh, caricatures of themselves. So what the exercise, I think, um, uh, to do in class is to try it with Monty. And uh, you all know uh, Monty by now, he's this little green pea, you can find him at Creative Crash, if you just Google Maya Rig Monty, you'll find him at Creative Crash, he's free, um, although you could, should always credit his creator um, uh, whenever you use him on your demo reel. Um, uh, and, you know, there are many things that we can do to make Monty feel masculine and feminine, or masculine or feminine, even though he doesn't have any arms, uh, we can make his feet wider apart, uh, we, can, we can have him rotate a lot, uh, sort of mimicking the action of his shoulders, or if it's a montet, we could we could mimic the mi mimic the action of the of the hips moving. We could have his body leaning forward, or perhaps leaning backwards. Uh, the feet could be pointing outwards on the male walk, perhaps pointing inwards on the montet walk. Um, also, you can you can import free um, props from. Um, uh, uh, a uh, website like uh, tobosquid.com, which has tons and tons of free props. In this case, we've taken a, this is one of my ex-students from Escape Studios, um, uh, Greg, who has uh, imported a, uh, a hat here from Tobo Squid and a pencil. <laughs> so he's made him look kind of like a, like a builder, kind of like a construction guy. Uh, whereas and he's imported a little flower here to make Montet look uh, more feminine. Although, for my money, we could make that much, much bigger and exaggerate it. And you can easily parent these objects to Monty just by going um, uh, Control-P or using the parent control uh, in the, uh, from the animation me me menu. All you do is select the control on Monty, uh, select the object you want to attach to it, and then go uh, uh, Parent Constrain. That's all you do. Very straightforward. We can also change his colour in the um, uh, in the uh, colour editor. Which sorry, in the it's, a, it's called the hyper shade. It should really be called the shader edit, editor because that's what you're doing is editing the shaders. In Maya, it's called the hyper shade, um, and you can adjust the colour on Monty to make him green or blue or pink or whatever if you want to if you want to um, uh, continue to play with the caricatures. So have fun with it. Uh, Monty is a great place to start. There are, of course, other rigs, but we, I like Monty because he's relatively easy to animate with, um, and you can squeeze a lot of personality out of this little green pea. It's a great little rig.